Hi, I'm Phil Harbottle. This is my 24th video discussing 1950s British science fiction paperbacks. T.V. Boardman was an established English publisher who tried to introduce quality science fiction to Britain with hardcover and paperback science fiction titles. Unfortunately, they didn't succeed. Let's hear their story. Now, as I said, they were already an established publisher and they were very successful with their line of American detective fiction in both hardcover and paperback editions with striking painted covers by the talented Dennis McLaughlin. They opened their science fiction program in September 1951 with hardcover American reprints. What Mad Universe by Frederick Brown, Princess of the Atom by Rhea Cummins, and The Big Eye by Max Ehrlich. Now the brown dust wrapper, you see here, that set out their manifesto to establish science fiction in Britain. And they were followed, those first three titles, were followed in 1952 by a rather pedestrian British original, The Wrong Side of the Moon by Francis and Stephen Ashton, dealing soberly with an early attempt at space travel. The next title was much better. John Cornell's original anthology, No Place Like Earth, a strong selection of 10 stories of both American and British origin and headlined by two stories by John Wyndham, one as John Bainan, and fiction by Arthur C. Clarke, who also provided an introduction that AB promoted science fiction is a legitimate literary form. As you see from the, the contents there. Four of the stories had appeared in New Worlds magazine, and another four had been reprinted there. An attractive McLaughlin uh, dust wrapper made this book a prime collectible today. It's also in a slightly larger format than the other books, making it a very unusual and collectible volume. Now through 1951, through sorry, through 1953, Boardman continued to concentrate on their highly successful detective novels but they returned to science fiction in 1954 with an impressive run of seven American titles. Project Jupiter by Frederick Brown with a Ron Turner cover, Star Science Fiction Stories edited by Frederick Pohl, Children of the Atom by Wilmore Yates Shires, The Caves of Steel, a famous novel by Isaac Asimov, and Dublin Space by Fletcher Pratt. More to follow, as we'll see here in a moment. See, the 1954 titles continued with Triplanetary by E.E. E. Smith and Conan the Conqueror by Robert E. Howard. And the hardcover science fiction continued into 1955, an eclectic mix of strong, mainly American titles that included This Island Earth by Raymond Jones, which was the basis of the famous uh, movie starring Jeff Morrow. The Current of Space by Isaac Asimov and Alien Dust by E.C. Tubb, novelising a series of connected short stories from New Worlds plus one from Nebula with a cover by Gerard Quinn. Then there was First Lensman by E.E. E. Smith with a fine Harold Jones cover. Now collectors should also note that The Big Ball of Wax by Shepard Mead was science fiction, the futuristic satire, 
but it was not identified as part of the Boardman science fiction series. The last labelled title was The Sword of Rhiannon by Lee Brackett, with another nice cover by Dan Day artist Harold Johns. Now, although Brackett's novel carried the notation first published in Great Britain in 1955, Boardman actually didn't release the title until September 1956 because of marketing difficulties for science fiction. The sad fact was that by 1956, hardcover science fiction in the UK virtually ended. There were probably several reasons for this mysterious failure. Quite possibly part of the answer lay in the gradual slump in the use of circulating libraries, which for many years had been the main purchasers of hardcover genre fiction. These were situated throughout the country, not only in the big chains like Boots' famous circulating library, but in many high street news agents and small shops. But with the easing of paper rationing and the big increase in the amount of respectable paperback fiction becoming readily available from bookshops and other outlets, people ceased to use these library outlets. Another factor was the advent of commercial television in the UK, which brought popular culture to the masses who no longer needed to read books to stimulate their need to be entertained. My own theory is that hardcover publishers may simply have found that the science fiction lines were not as profitable or as easy to procure as their other genre staples, detective fiction and westerns. Science fiction publishing involved more trouble and expense than those other genres. The need to employ outside editors and consultants to ensure quality specialist cover artists and higher rates to reflect the fact that two agent fees had to be met for American material. If all these extra cost factors were not reflected in extra sales over and above their other genre products, then it simply wasn't worth the candle. However, Boardman's earlier experiments in science fiction had been successful, enough to lead them to reissue some of their titles in new paperback editions in 1954, which we'll see here. There we are, there's the paperbacks. Now this short run series is uh, highly collectible to do. No Place Like Earth with a new McLaughlin cover, The Big Eye, What Mad Universe, Wrong Side of the Moon, and finally in February 50, 1955, the paperback original, The Best from New Worlds, edited by John Cornell with a cover by Gerard Quinn. The book is notable for E.C. Tubbs' first anthology appearance with Rockets on Human. Let's see from the contents page. Rockets on Human. And it was also notable for an intriguing introduction by John Wyndham, writing as John Bainan. A very unusual volume, but unfortunately, Boardman did not continue with paper science fiction thereafter. A major factor in the blight on science fiction at this time was the depredations of the mushroom publishers. Not so much because of the amount of rubbishy science fiction churned out by firms like Gannett, Curtis Warren and John Spencer, although that obviously didn't help, but because of their disgusting gangster fiction, which had resulted in court prosecutions, jail sentences and fines. By 1955, as author Ted Tug pointed out in one of my earlier videos, booksellers and wholesale distribution outlets 
were refusing to handle any books from the mushroom publishers. And since a large part of their output had been science fiction, the genre was identified with them. So perfectly good science fiction, such as the paperbacks put out by Nova and Boardman, was discontinued. What an opportunity was lost.